incredible parkour theory number five. Today's topic will be parkour sport or art. That is a question that pops up every now and then and I'm gonna take a look at this. To begin with, if we ask the question whether parkour is sport or art, we first of all need to know what sport and art are. And so we need to define these two and we also need to see the difference between these two, if there is a difference at all. To start with, if we look at the structure, how sports and arts are built, already then we see a pretty dramatic difference. I think all sports have some sort of goal, some rules, and they usually also have a measurement system because usually sports also has several participants and these participants are supposed to be measured or compared to each other or their performance and all sports result in some sort of a ranking so you always have a winner. All of these things art usually doesn't have. If you think about music or painting or whatever discipline you think about there is no such thing which leads to the next point that sports are stable in their form and arts usually are totally unstable in their form. To explain, soccer a hundred years ago was pretty much exactly the same as it is today. Just that the level of professionality rise, the athletic level, technical level, but there was no fundamental change. Now in arts it's different. Arts are diversifying and mutating, evolving into all kinds of different forms all the time. Even if you just look at the last 20 years of hip-hop you can see uh, how much change happened only within one little genre. As I have said an essential part of sport is the comparison of the participants. Now if you want to compare you always need to have criteria by which you uh, compare. People try to make these criteria as objective as possible because of course you need to have a credible result to have a proper ranking. And so what is the most objective? Well, pretty much anything that you can count, you know. Every movement where there is the try to organize it as a fixed official sport becomes more and more narrow because the measurement system requires some objective criteria. And so uh, sooner or later all sports are only revolving around numbers or anything that you can measure. I mean, for example, gymnastics has such a criteria as form that is still very visible to the eyes. Okay, there's one ideal form and we all know how that looks like and we can compare the form of all participants to that ideal form. Already by looking at the structure and the dynamics of sports and arts, we can easily see that these two things are very crucially different. Now if two activities are so different, that probably means that they are fulfilling a very different function. They fulfill a completely different purpose. Well, to see what purpose is fulfilled by these different activities, I think we need to look at what is being achieved through the activity. What is arts resulting in? What is arts achieving? Uh, and what is sports achieving? But first I want to look at arts. Now to explain the purpose of arts or what art is doing, I would like to give an example. That is, if you go to sleep at night, your mind produces all kinds of pictures. And these pictures are sort of representative of some feeling. For example, if you had a stressy day and you were late for something and you now carry this feeling of time pressure into your sleep. And so this subjective feeling of being too late and having to hurry now gets objectified through some kind of images and pictures. So maybe you are trying to catch a train in your dream and you cannot catch it for some dubious reasons. And then maybe the whole scenario switches to some completely different imagery, but the underlying feeling of time pressure and hurry stays the same. And so the symbols change all the time, but they are still representative of that feeling. Art is doing the same thing that your mind is doing at night. It takes the subjective content, the invisible content, and produces some sort of image which is visible to some senses. So you can hear it, see it, taste it, whatever. So art objectifies something which is subjective or it externalizes something which is internal. Think about any art, paintings, music, whatever. You can always have sort of uh, an 
insight into the inside of the mind of the artist. If you want to produce authentic, credible, sad music, you have to have the feeling of sadness. And that is exactly what you can feel in some forms of music or just pretty much any feeling it can be happiness or sometimes it can also be content which is not so easy to define because you have to think about it like this that the experience of humans is much richer than our vocabulary of spoken language and so you cannot express all the fine nuances of experience through a word spoken language you can imagine like a screen uh, which has a lower resolution than reality or how you perceive how you experience reality so the skill of art you could say is the ability to translate subjective content into some objective image and image doesn't mean it always needs to be visual it can be movement it can be sound it can be forms shapes colors and what is that actually? Well, that translation is expression, because that's what it is. And that is also what I'm doing right now at this moment, because I'm arranging words in some specific order, in order that they can convey the meaning that I have in my mind, which is to you, first of all, invisible. Invisible mind content is translated into sound. That is pretty miraculous. So we can see that spoken language is based on the same mechanism as arts. So arts is a language or language is art. Um, but there is a difference between spoken language and art. In everyday spoken language, usually we want the other side to understand what we mean. That is not necessarily true for arts. Nonetheless, they are based on the same mechanism. They are basically different manifestations of the same thing there's multiple languages and it seems that different languages have the capacity to express different things not all languages can express all things so for example music is much better in expressing emotions uh, than maybe spoken language now maths is much better in expressing ideas of a mathematical nature for a proper mathematician uh, a formula is much more literal than spoken language for example and in order that a language like maths could evolve, well, you needed people, first of all, that had something of a mathematical nature in their minds. Otherwise, no one would have ever dealt with problems that maths is dealing with. And ideas and thoughts are, by the way, also part of the subjective content. It's not just feelings, but also these. So it's a part of human experience. It's a part of the human mind. And so maths could evolve. Um, Different languages have the capacity to express different mind content, you could say. So you can see spoken language is just a part of human language. For example, there's other languages like dancing or, of course, also parkour. If you think about parkour, well, the parkour feeling is also pretty much specific because if you feel like doing parkour, you will not start dancing all of a sudden because it would be a different feeling which would lead to dancing. Now you would say, well, what is it then which is expressed through parkour? Well, that is not a question that you would ask about dancing. And why? Because I think we're just more familiar with the thought of uh, dancing. You know, you can feel like dancing, but what is that feeling? Well, I don't know what that feeling is, but if you look at people that dance, you have pretty much the perfect objectification of that feeling. There needs to be no further explanation because for all further explanation, I would have to use words. And uh, apparently words are not suitable to express the dancey feeling. That's why dancing has evolved. And the same thing counts for parkour. So you could basically say, what is parkour expressing? Well, parkour is expressing that feeling which makes you do parkour. Now that seems to be like a play of words, but it's not. But of course we have to see that art is also a word and people understand words differently sometimes. Especially art seems to be a word which has some noble atmosphere around it or something like that. So people are quick to call that what they are doing uh, an art. And so are reproducing stereotypical forms of art because they believe that if they replicate the form then that is also art. But in this way how I explained what art is, 
it is always the process how a form came about not the form itself which would define it as art okay now let's come to sports what is the purpose of sports there can be several purposes health reasons socializing reasons now those are not the characteristics i want to look at but i want to look at one major characteristic which i believe to be the most dominant feature of sports uh, simply because that is the feature which gave sports the form it uh, has at the first place so it must play a majorly important role now what is that most dominant feature now as i have said before all sports result in a ranking and in order to get a ranking you need a measurement system but even if people are just doing sport for themselves the measurement still plays a role even though they don't have opponents so it seems that measuring by itself also plays a role even if you don't have a ranking in the end it's such a sporty thing to have these kind of measuring gadgets with you when you're doing sports something which is completely foreign in painting or something like that now as i have said already earlier all sports are kind of revolving around numbers or anything which is easy to measure it is as if the movements in sports are adapting to that which is easy to measure so the question really is what is more important here the measuring or the activity itself the need to measure objectively whatever you're doing plays such a major role that even the activity the way it is done subordinates itself to the measurement system the form becomes secondary the measuring becomes primary so the question is what are they measuring for what purpose does that measuring again fulfill now of course what measuring does is it gives a credible proof of progress apparently uh, sports is not so much about what is being done but it's important that whatever is being done it is being done increasingly more better faster sometimes less but there always needs to be a growth a progress towards a getting closer to well where to something which represents something good something worthwhile achieving goals that's what we call goals but the same thing which counts for the activity namely that it is shaped and formed by the measurement system also counts for the goals so a goal can only serve as a goal at all if it is measurable and so uh, also here you can see the measurement stands higher than the activity itself i begin to doubt that the goals are really goals but it seems to me more and more that the goals only exist that you have something that you can measure your way towards i don't know to me it makes sense because if i look at sports it can't really be true that the goal of some person is to be a few milliseconds faster than before by doing the same thing so i think the goals are pseudo goals and they are arbitrary but what is not arbitrary is the feeling that you get from traveling towards a goal. Think about what it makes you feel. Uh, going towards something supposedly good, you know, moving forward, progress, productivity, all of these uh, feelings are very crucial for probably every individual. So to me, it seems that this sporty structure kind of is like a fictitious or artificial coordination system in which we can find a direction it creates a microcosm of meaning kind of so there's a little sleight of hands going on here we kind of believe that the goal in the end is meaningful to us but what actually is meaningful to us is the belief the illusion that that thing is meaningful and so that we can have a direction that we go towards and that having a direction is the meaningful about this activity the tragic in this whole coordination system is that meaning slash success is defined in a relative way there needs to be always more than compared to and it usually results in pyramids so there's can only be a few on the top and they are only on the top because there are a lot not on the top and that is what makes them successful by definition and if you look at a sports competition it's a perfect illustration of this dilemma because everyone agrees upon a goal but what actually is the 
true goal is to be closer to that goal than someone else and that is the real goal if you're not competing uh, same thing but without other people you set a goal but what actually is the goal is that you top yourself every time battling against yourself kind of you always need to beat others or beat yourself in order that the meaning within this system can be maintained so you are doomed for eternal increase or eternal being better than others now that is of course a lot of pressure and you cannot win this game forever by the way why do i use success and meaning as kind of synonyms in some sense they are i think we can agree upon that everyone wants to be successful and whatever you believe success to be that must also have some meaning to you because otherwise you wouldn't define it as success as i've tried to explain success in sports is defined in a relative way and that means that also meaning is defined in a relative way and that is problematic because what it means is that your sense of success and meaning can only be fulfilled on the basis that for others it is not fulfilled that just lies in the nature of relative because success in the relative concept gets its meaning through the non-success of others or another way to put it would be that success gets its value by its scarcity now the longer you look at these meanings of success and meaning within this structure the more empty they become because it is as if they don't have a real substance or filling i want to illustrate this with an example imagine you would define colors in a relative way so let's say blue what is blue not green and then you ask well what is green then and you say not blue this way you have two words that depend on each other so they define themselves over the other but both in and of themselves mean nothing really another example imagine you would define health as the absence of disease and on the other way you would define disease as the absence of health well then in the end you don't know what each of these are it's meaningless you could say that a relative definition of meaning creates meaningless meaning uh, I hope I have not confused anyone and it's kind of strange that we have such a definition for um, an important and direction giving concept such as success and meaning are if you look at sports it is as if there's a bunch of people that make a contract with themselves and they say okay we all want to be successful and now we're just gonna define some goal and whoever gets closer to that goal can call himself a successful one and also believe himself to be a successful one i mean he even gets certificates of success in the form of medals and trophies these are kind of the official proofs that you are successful that you are doing something with meaning just a quick reminder it's not only the one that gets first that feels his sense of success fulfilled but it is also fulfilled if you have an increase so if you generally land on rank 7 and now you work yourself up to rank 4 the purpose of that relative definition of success is fulfilled but if you're going backwards in the ranking that rather feels like failure now you might say I'm exaggerating a little bit it's not like that sports is about that thing only of course not as I have said in the beginning I just picked out one aspect of arts and sports and have kind of isolated these and blown it up to the extreme so that we can see it nicely and after that we can uh, zoom out again put it back integrated in the whole picture again and then we understand the whole thing a little bit better I know that there is a fun factor in sports just as well as there is a fun factor in art so that is common ground nonetheless I think you can't neglect that that what I have just explained does play a major role in sports and I think you can easily recognize if the outcome of the sport so the ranking if that has effects on your emotional well-being so if you are really really happy about winning something but really disappointed if you are not winning then that is a clear indication that it does play a role maybe another disclaimer just because I have said that art has a different purpose it doesn't mean that the artist only follows the purpose of arts of course artists can also have this relative concept of success 
in their minds and it is influencing their art probably in some way but I'll get to this in the end in the summary of this video. So let's just take a very quick look at how success in arts could be defined. I would say just as in sports success means that the purpose of the activity is being fulfilled. Now if the purpose of art is expression well then the artist is kind of successful if the idea that he had in mind is being expressed successfully through his art. So the artist reaches a point when he says like, yes, now that's it. And that means usually that he feels like the art now is an adequate representation of that which led him to do that art. Now the expression of an idea can take sometimes, you know, minutes, sometimes hours, years, or even a whole lifetime, depends on how big the idea is, because it can work in all scales. For example, if you take the Dutch artist Escher, he started out as a classical landscape painter and over time more and more elements of kind of optical illusions uh, appeared in his paintings. And at some point his art became almost mathematical because he was dealing with like logical problems, like with things that look possible but are actually not. And he did that until the end of his life and so you can see this is the way how expression works. You get intrigued by one idea or by a set of ideas, let's say, and you start going into that direction. And then you're kind of exploring that idea and uh, check out different corners of that world. So it starts out general usually and it becomes more and more specific, I would say. And I think the same thing counts for parkour. You start parkour with a general interest for this kind of movement. I mean, it's already a little bit specified. Uh, you don't go to ballet, you wanna do parkour, but then you find out how rich this world is and then uh, you choose by preference, basically. And over time, you create a very distinctly individual picture. Okay, enough of this, let's move on because there's more problems, you know. By the way, if you disagree with any of these points, uh, just drop a comment and I will try to answer it if I can, if I have even the slightest clue. Now, I have one more problem before I get to the final conclusion and that is that this definition, this feeling of what success is, is after all in the experience of people, so within the subjective bubble. The form of sports is definitely the outcome of subjective mind content and that sounds like art to me. If mind content is externalized through forms, well then that is expression. So what are we going to do with that? There is a difference between art and sports in the sense that the object, the purpose of arts, is the expression itself. Whereas sports is basically an involuntary expression. If you would take the alien perspective and would look down on the earth into a stadium and there's like 20 people doing the same exact thing and everyone is like giving its best to be just a tiny fraction better than the other, the alien, if it would have never felt what competitiveness feels like, maybe it could deduct something about that feeling from just observing the sports event. If you think about it, pretty much any activity you can do expresses something about what is going on in your mind. For example, if you go to the music store and buy a guitar, that action from you is not supposed to express that you want to make music, but still you can read it from that action. So. It is an indirect expression. Yet, if you take up the guitar and are starting to play tones, well, behind that there is the specific intent of expression. So art is about direct expression, whereas other activities are usually only indirectly expressing something. Already the choice of a language, the kind of movement that you are attracted by, tells something indirectly. So if you are artistically inclined, you will uh, tend to do an activity which enables expression. And expression requires a flexible form because the form, the symbols need to be freely arrangeable in order to carry the subjective content. And so people that are artistically inclined will gravitate towards uh, activities which are free, basically. And that's why I think there's a lot of artistic uh, people in parkour. Behind art, there must be a desire, there must be a drive 
uh, to express. I would say the existence of art itself is the proof that there is a will to express in humans. Um, check out Matma clothing. Well, we don't have this sweater, but we have other cool stuff, which Lisa and me have designed and produced all fair trade organic. We ship into the whole world. It's parkour clothing, but you can also wear it for other purposes than parkour. You can even wear it for sports. <laughs> Look, there's a measuring tool. So a little summary here in the almost end of the video. Let's say if you would look at the whole of human activity like a map which reflects the human mind, then sports and arts are in different corners of that map. Sports would be somewhere in the corner where there is the need to have a direction, a meaning, you know, something that you can work towards. And that need is fusioned with a what I have called relative definition of success slash meaning. So it is not only the need to have meaning, but also the idea of where to find that meaning. Or this kind of diffusion of these two things. And that is why uh, words like, you know, achievement, performance, progress, going forward, goals, willpower, motivation. These are the words which are very common in the sporty world and they kind of describe the mental atmosphere of the sporty sport world. Arts on the other side is in a completely different area, you know, it is somewhere closely to where language is, so expression plays a major role. And so there's completely different words necessary to describe the uh, vibe of arts. Stuff like inspiration, feeling, ideas. So if we go back to the initial question, whether uh, parkour is sport or art, uh, we can see now that, of course, that's a useless question because it depends on what purpose lies behind your parkour. So it's an individual thing. And often it's not that it is either one, but of course these minefields are overlapping. So I guess most of the time we don't know why we are doing some things. And therefore I also think it's not always easy to say whether one is doing artistic or sporty parkour. Even though, of course, I think the extreme examples are rather easy to recognize, but uh, most people are probably a mixture of things and it's hard to, you know, isolate these things. Personally, I can also recognize some sporty and some artistic characteristics in my movement. You know, roughly speaking, you could say that your parkour is probably artistic if your parkour uh, revolves around ideas and is led by feeling rather than uh, predefined goals then it's probably artistic and your parkour is probably rather sporty if you are about the increase of numbers so if you tend to do the same thing as always but more and more and more of it then it's possible that uh, you have a sporty drive behind parkour if you would make an analogy to painting the artistic painter would paint something which he feels attracted to. And there's some resonance uh, between the artist and the motives. The sporty painter on the other side would probably go about it like this. Okay, how many trees can I fit on the canvas? And then see whether he can increase that number of trees over time. How many tree leaves could I possibly paint on a tree? Or how few? What is the least amount of leaves I can paint on that tree? <laughs> so that would be the sporty painter. Now one more thing that I should add maybe is that there can be of course other influences than artistic or sporty influences. For example there can be an ideological influence shaping your movement. You should do no flips. That was something from about 10 years ago. Um, habit can be another influence so you're just doing something in a specific way because that's the way that you have always done it and that is the way it will stay for eternity. So that is neither an artsy nor a sporty ambition. Other things like just laziness or fear can be also influencing your movement because let's say you feel attracted to some kind of movement that, but you are good at some other thing already and so you just keep doing what you have always done. So you see, it's not like there's only sport and there's art and if you do parkour you do either one but of course it's a very complicated remix of stuff by the way, that mechanism of doing something for the sole reason of increase is not exclusive to sport. For example, Instagram works the same way, you know. 
there's this magic spell of numbers and it feels kind of nice if these numbers are growing and of course the designers of that app have understood that completely well, let's take some crazy rich people that have become obsessed with increasing their wealth even though there's no point to it anymore you know they fell under the spell of increasing numbers um, I guess that after this video uh, some people will be like yes I knew it art is supreme to sports and then they're gonna identify with art and then they are gonna feel higher in the ranking than sports people and well you can recognize already that is a sporty thought the same thing counts for like if someone is like really good in parkour and then some other person says like yeah he's really good but he's arrogant well what is that that also is kind of that sporty mechanism but a very insidious way of it because what you are doing is um, yes he's good but measured by another criteria which you introduced like morals um, he's actually worse than well you that is implied but no one ever spoke about morals it was about movement so so you can see the whole thing runs way deeper than sport or art okay so that was it uh, feel free to comment of course ask questions criticize and uh, I'll try to answer every question and of course share the video so that the numbers can grow check out Matma clothing and of course subscribe because there's a lot of cool videos coming and click on that bell thing